Hi, this is David Lovering. I'm the drummer from the Pixies, and I am honored to be here in the Vader factory here today. I just became, probably in 2011, a Vader endorser, which I am very, very proud of. I've been playing Vader sticks back since 19... Geez, I don't even know the year. It was when they first came out. I can't remember what it was, but it's, it's just great because it was something that, you know, I've loved and used even before I became endorsed by them. So it, it's just wonderful to be, you know, acknowledged and, and get, the, get them to use these sticks. So it, it's wonderful. Originally, I started using, I was using all different sticks back in, you know, f when I was a kid. And I was, uh, I became aware of Vader sticks when they first came out. Uh, I saw them, I think it was in, Oh gosh, it was Jack's Drum Shop or somewhere in Boston. And I bought a pair and just, they were wonderful. And I used 5Bs, I used them for years. In fact, I used 5Bs all the way up until 2000, I'm gonna say 2010, and then I switched to 5As because I think I'm getting old and I'm getting weak. <laughs> and I can't reach up for those cymbals anymore. But no, not, not really. So I think the 5As, um, just they, they feel better for me. I just I. Feel I play better with the five A's, so it's uh, uh, those are the, my six of choice right now. The Vader five A's. Back when I was living in Boston and with the Pixies, um, actually pre before that, when I had my drum teacher Alan Stone growing up in Burlington, uh, he told me about Jack's Drum Shop. And when I had the chance or the opportunity when I was in Boston either with my dad or getting into there after the fact, I would always go to Jack's Drum Shop because that was the place. I bought cymbals there and my drumsticks. I didn't need a drum set because I had my Gretsch for years, but cymbals I would buy there and my drumsticks and heads, that's what I would get. And it was, for a kid who was into drums, I mean, and it was a mecca. There was nothing else like it. You know, you'd have your music stores that had all the potpourri of everything, but to have a dedicated drum shop was fantastic. And what, what kicks me that I just learned was, you know, that I think, if I remember correctly, because I had lived in Boston and that's when I changed over to Vader Sticks from what I was using. I know I got them at Jack's Drum Shop. I didn't go to, I don't know what was around then, but I, it was always Jack's Drum Shop, Drum Shop that I could walk to and get to. To know that, to learn that Jack Adams, who from Jack's Drum Shop, started Vader Sticks. So this is a, it's a big, you know, 360 going around in there and I'm just, I'm, I'm delighted by it. I first started playing drums maybe, uh, oh gosh, when I was five, six or something like that, but it wasn't, I didn't have a drum set. <laughs> I didn't get a drum set until um, uh, my dad bought me one, uh, probably when I was 12 years old. And I got a Gretsch uh, Black Pearl, uh, like a jazz kit. All the Gretsch's kit back, Gretsch kits back then were all just jazz kits, those sizes. And this was a pre-CBS, the round badge, the really, really, really nice kit. Although I didn't know that, and I sold it very cheaply later in life, <laughs> you know, which would be worth a fortune now. But um, I started playing drums. I took uh, drum lessons in second grade. Uh, they had them in my elementary school. And after school, I was taking lessons from a man named Bob Carlton. My dad would drive me every Wednesday night to, uh, in Stoneham, Mass, to his house. And he was a, probably an 80, three-year-old guy that uh, would teach me lessons and for four years I played just learning rudiments on a drum pad that's all it was and we would never do anything else never to a drum set or anything even though I had a drum set at home it was just playing drum pads and learning how to read music drum sheets and then finally I graduated on the fifth year to downstairs in the basement where we had an old 1920s huge kick drum kit that I learned to play on. And the first thing that he put on was uh, 78 records of all big band or like, like pre-big band. It was like, you know, the 78 era. And that's what I learned all to play to that stuff, kind of jazz. And I think the newest record, if I remember, that he had was, uh, which was uh, 33 was, I can't remember the name of the band, but it was Put Your Hand in the Hand. It was an old song from the early 70s. And that was like the first rock song that I learned. And then after that, um, yeah, I just, uh, I learned all I could with him. I went on and then I took up a new drum teacher. Um, uh, Alan Stone was his name and he was a Berkeley graduate and he would come to my house and he taught me how to transcribe all the Rush songs and things like that that were all my things that I liked when I was probably uh, 
18, 19 years old, stuff like that. And I was still living at home, believe it, at 18, 19. And um, it was good. And I used, I took drums from, lessons from him for a while. And uh, then I think um, I just kind of fell out of it being a teenager or stuff like that. I had to do other things. So drumming kind of fell by the wayside. I didn't do a lot of it. I tried playing in different bands that were all around, um, kind of backyard bands, party bands and stuff. Then I just gave it up. And I had a girlfriend at the time that said, you know, I need to do something else, you know, <laughs> rather than working in a retail store. So I went to college, I was going to college for a while, and the drums had been put away for years. And then I got a call um, from a guy I had worked with uh, at Radio Shack years back, and he was married to Kim Deal, who had answered an ad from Joey Santiago and Charles Thompson, or actually Black Francis from the Pixies. They were looking for a drummer. I went down to Charlestown to Kim's house, tried out, that was it, we just clicked. Uh, I got my drums out of the, the, the attic and became uh, a drummer for the Pixies, and that's what I did until 1993, through five albums and countless touring, and then we broke up with a, as a dysfunctional band. And then I had uh, really nothing to do, and I just um, shot the breeze for a long time. You know, I played in other bands. I played in Cracker, Nitzareb, uh, a stint with a band called The Martinis that was with Joe Santiago. And then I just came disenchanted because um, nothing could top the Pixies or what I had done in the Pixies. So uh, I just gave up drums. I put them away and I just kind of lived a non-existent life for a while. And I just did a lot of metal detecting, which was a hobby I did for years since I was a kid. And became a professional magician. <laughs> and um, that's what I was doing to, to kind of make a living and do stuff, was going around doing, um, you know, opening up for rock bands with my magic show and doing uh, theater shows performing at the Magic Castle, stuff like that. And uh, that's what it was for a while. And then I got a call, uh, probably in 2003, that the band wanted to get back together. 2004 we started and we were bigger than ever. And it was, it was something else. And, um, and we're still doing that to, the, to this day. We're still touring. Yeah, it's now 2012. The Pixies have been playing longer now, from 2004 to 2012, than our existence previously when we were first banned. And that just shocks us. We can't believe it. And we have nothing new either, so that's, that's amazing as well. But um, yeah, it's keep me going. And um, the, the one thing I regret about it all is that I gave up drums. Uh, it wasn't until 2004 when I took out those drums again to, to play with the Pixies that I realized my love for them and then just something that I did that I put them away that I'll, I'll never do again. So the drums, I'll always stay drumming and I'll always be using my Vader sticks until the end. The Pixies, we opened up for the U2 Zoo TV uh, tour. We did that for an entire summer. And I remember when we got the original schedule, looking at it and say we were playing Boston, we were playing the Boston Garden, the original Boston Garden, before TD Gardens had came in. And the Boston Garden is where I saw all my shows. My first show, I saw Jethro Tull there. So, and the, you know, Celtics games, Bruins games. This was, this was a, a church to me in a way. So we played, our gig on there was opening up for U2 on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day in Irish Boston, opening up for U2, right? So we get there, I had my Larry Bird, I had the number 33 jersey on, ready to play. And, you know, as a band, you know, you get treated pretty well. You know, with U2, it was, everything was, you know, it was treated well, you get the nice dressing rooms and everything. And then when we were on our own usually, you know, everything is, you're treated fine. You have nice dressing rooms, nice food, stuff like that. When we got to the Boston Gardens, our dressing room was the men's restroom, the public restroom, I remember, and that we shared with their, their belly dancer that, that came out and did the show. And it was kind of, um, it was kind of a letdown because, you know, we, you know, it was like, this was the holiest of place to me. I'm not, I'm not religious, but it was a really uh, a, a something to play the Boston Gardens. And having a dressing room and um, that we had to share, and it was, you know, a filthy dressing room, which was the toilets and stuff like that. It was kind of a letdown, but um, that was my memories of U2 in Boston <laughs> back on St. Patrick's Day back in 90, 92, I think, or 91. For all you future drummers out there, the only advice that I could give would be just practice. I think practice, 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 and practice. Um, learn how to play different types of music. And I think one thing I can give as advice that happened for the Pixies is the only thing that was different for us is we were unique, we were different. And if you can be unique and different, that's what can be an asset to you. So if you can be unique and different in your either playing, 
I'm not saying that my playing, playing is unique or different. I think I'm pretty much standard, but at least our music that we have with the band is pretty, pretty different. So that's what made it for us. So um, just get out there and practice and, and play and, and do it. Anyway, I'm going to check out the factory right now to see how these sticks are made. I'm very, very interested because, like I said, I've been using Vader for, for years and years and years. And even before I was endorsed by them, I love these sticks. And you should check out Vader 6. If you haven't, they're worth trying. They're absolutely wonderful. And uh, as for the Pixies, you know, um, we've got the year off right now. I, I'm not at liberty to say what's going next, but 2013 might be uh, something good. So um, keep tuned to Vader and uh, the Pixies, and uh, thank you.